In this video, I'm going to show you five of the most common cybersecurity vulnerabilities in small business networks and how to fix them. If you resolve these five vulnerabilities inside of your network, you will be better off than the majority of small businesses. And the best part, cyber criminals won't see you as low hanging fruit and may just move on to the next target. So let's get started. Hi, I'm William, and welcome back to the SMB Secure YouTube channel, where we're focused on helping small and mid-sized companies, the IT professionals at these companies, improve their security, improve their defenses, and reduce the risk of breaches. Let's look at the five most common security vulnerabilities in networks. The most common vulnerability by far that we saw in our organization throughout 2020 while we were conducting penetration tests and vulnerability assessments across a wide range of industry verticals was a lack of SMB signing. The SMB protocol, and that's SMB for server message block, not necessarily small business, that's the protocol that handles file sharing and transfers, like when you move a Word document to a file server or share. But here's the problem. Most SMB interaction requires authentication from the client. But as an attacker, if I even know the hash of the password of a local administrator account, I can use that to get a remote shell on that system. Basically, an attacker can pretend to be the user they have the credentials for or the credential hash for, and they can gain access to the target system. You can prevent this by enabling SMB sign. That's a way to validate that all SMB clients are who they claim to be. In Windows, you can simply change a few registry parameters to enable and to require SMB signing. Check out the companion guide in the description to get the exact keys in the registry that need to be changed. And if you're in a large network with Active Directory, you can push these changes out with a GPO or a group policy object. The next common security vulnerability in small businesses is running unsupported operating systems. Do you remember Windows Vista or Windows XP or even Windows NT? Yes, these are really old, old operating systems, but we still find them in networks constantly in 2020 and even this year in 2021 and in all industries. I've even found a Windows NT device with root FTP access and no credentials needed in a bank. Now, most of the time, companies don't simply have a Windows XP machine in an office being used and someone sitting and typing at it. But these unsupported operating systems usually come in embedded devices, things like medical machines, manufacturing robots, smart hardware devices, and the like. And the problem with having unsupported operating systems on your network is that they are usually riddled with vulnerabilities that attackers can use to exploit them and to pivot elsewhere in your network, like the room booking device we found in that bank during a penetration test. We could drop off malware on those devices, then we could go to another computer that could not get to the internet because of a firewall, but we could still pick up that malware from those booking devices that had that unsupporting operating system. If you have unsupported operating systems that you have to run because they are a device like the ones we mentioned, segment them into their own zones using VLANs or firewall zones so that they cannot be used to reach any of the other systems inside of your network. The third most common security vulnerability that we find in small business networks is the default SNMP community strings. If you're not familiar with the SNMP or the Simple Network Management Protocol, it's a solution or a protocol for managing and monitoring devices in your network. Uh, the basic premise of SNMP, the way it works, is that there are community strings or names and credentials. And these strings are like usernames and passwords and they allow access to host in your network. That could be a workstation, a network device like a router and a switch, or anything. And the danger with SNMP is when the default community string is left in place. Many times this default string is the word public. This information can include configuration details that would allow them to carry out attacks. Um, sometimes the default string will even allow the attacker or the individual to make configuration changes. So if you're using SNMP, be sure that you change that community string. Um, sometimes devices come with SNMP set up by default, so that's something to be aware of. Number four is missing updates, and this one is huge. Patching and updates is one of the most basic security measures that everyone can take. Patching is a good thing. It fixes vulnerabilities that could otherwise be exploited by an attacker. You should patch your systems often in your network. If you can, enforce patch application because many times employees will simply keep delaying updates because they find them inconvenient. 
They don't want to stop working. They don't want to reboot their computers, so they just keep pushing it off. And we regularly find systems missing important patches during network assessments and penetration tests. Last month, on a vulnerability assessment, for an example, we found servers missing patches as far back as 2014. An attacker could have a heyday on that server. Part of the problem is IT staff sometimes don't have accurate inventories of what's on the network. Hosts can get overlooked and left unpatched. And that's exactly what happened to Equifax, in fact. A server they didn't know existed didn't get a very important update, and that's how the criminals got in. So patch often. Patch workstations, patch servers, your operating systems, your network devices usually have firmware. Any device that has network communication needs patched. Um, even things like battery backups a lot of times, they have firmware that need upgrades. Patch often. And be sure that you reiterate to your employees and you help them understand that patching is a good thing. Patching protects your organization. Number five and the final common vulnerability for this video is having insecure service permissions. So services are software and applications on your computer that perform automated tasks like all of the executables that keep the operating system running or check for emails. And services, because they're automated, they usually start themselves without you telling them to. That's exactly where the danger comes in from having insecure service permissions. The executables start by themselves. You're probably familiar with permissions in Windows, right? A file or folder can have multiple levels of permissions or access. That is, everyone can read it, but not edit it, or only administrators can edit it. But sometimes, when you install third-party software on your computer, it creates services that allow the software to operate correctly. And depending on how you set up the software, those services can have insecure service permissions. And that means that one of those .exe or executable files could allow anyone to read, write, and edit it. You see the problem with this yet? An attacker could edit that executable file to do something completely different than what it's supposed to, or even add in their own malicious task. And then, the next time your computer restarts or that service runs, their malicious task will run instead of the intended application or with it. We use this attack to get remote access to systems during engagements often. So, use a vulnerability scanner to check your systems for these misconfigurations to get them fixed before an attacker can exploit them. Most of the time, users just need read and execute access to applications, not edit. So to wrap things up, now you may want to go check your network to make sure that you don't have any of these vulnerabilities that we talked about. Remember, criminals only have to be right one time. You have to be right every time. Reducing these common vulnerabilities will give you a chance to be right. Finally, be sure to check out our companion guide that we created for this video to show you how you can check for each of these vulnerabilities that we discussed and resolve them. I'll see you next time.